Welcome to the shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. Today we're gonna to go through the basic tools you need to start wrenching on your own bike. As we started doing this channel, this has definitely been our most requested video. So we're really excited to put this together for you guys. When we started thinking about it, we decided we wanted to talk about tools in relation to the task that you are able to do. So we kind of picked five things that you'll want to do as a beginner mechanic, and that's what these tools are for. We will put the links in the description to everything we talk about today. We'll include the links to the tools that we use, as well as, in a couple cases, some budget options. Start Starting to work on your own bike does require a little bit of upfront investment. However, we feel like that definitely pays off in the long term. First, we wanna talk about what you need for basic maintenance and keeping your bike clean and running on a daily basis. So even if you want to take your bike to the shop for most repairs, these are things that everyone should have because it'll really extend the life of everything on your bike. Okay, so this is our bucket of cleaning goodies. We've got some rags, we've got brushes. These are things we've just sort of accumulated over time. Like one decent kind of sponge or brush is probably good enough to get you started. And then we also have some bike specific cleaner spray. You can use dish soap, highly diluted. However, um, this is biodegradable and a little bit better for the environment. After you wash your bike, you always wanna make sure you are lubing your chain. We use squirt lube, it is a wax-based lube. It means it's better. <laughs> it means it doesn't get black stuff all over everything. Anyway, lube of your choice, this is ours. And then of course, you also want to have a floor pump so that you can pump up your tires and check your tire pressure before every ride. This will prevent your tire pressure from getting low when you don't realize it's getting low and getting flat. Our second category is adjustments. You wanna be able to adjust your saddle position, everything on your cockpit, your seat height, your derailleur, centering your brakes, all of that. And so to do that, you pretty much need a decent set of Allen keys. You can do a lot with a multi-tool, but having long handled Allen keys makes a huge difference for a lot of things. They're longer so they can fit into places that a multi-tool sometimes can't. They're stronger, they're less likely to strip out the bolt, they're less likely to strip themselves. It's just worth getting a good set of Allen keys. You pretty much use them for every single thing you do on your bicycle. You also want to have a set of screwdrivers. You probably already have at least one Phillips head and flathead bouncing around your house somewhere. If not, um, this can be a dual purpose investment because it turns out you use screwdrivers for a lot of things. Most of our bikes actually don't have any screwdriver things on it, but we still end up using these for lots of stuff. And older bikes, will you will need a screwdriver to adjust the derailleur. And then also a T25 tool. So if you have SRAM, actually I don't know about the current SRAM stuff, but like the 2016-15 SRAM stuff was all T25. And if you have six bolt rotors, this will be very necessary. Another thing that really helps with adjustments and getting your bike set up the way you want it is having a tape measure. We use this thing all of the time. And then also a paint pen. You can use a Sharpie. These ones stay on metal a little bit better and are clearer to see. Oh, it's yellow. The last thing we wanna say about adjustments is you may want to have a pedal wrench. This depends entirely on your pedals. We pretty much never use this and use a eight mil Allen key for our pedals. However, if you can't do that, you really do wanna be able to take your pedals on and off. I guess. When you want to, you really want to, that's the thing. And there's like no other way to do it on those kinds of pedals. So the next thing that you might wanna be able to do yourself is change tires. For this, you will want a good set of tire levers. This is a point where I think investing a little bit more money is good. We have broken a lot of tire levers. <laughs> so I mean, you just will break tire levers, yeah. so get a bunch of them. And also that's don't get metal ones because those can scuff up your rims and cause yeah. problems. And you should be able to change tires if you have a pump and tire levers. So the next thing you wanna be able to do is to check and replace your chain. Replacing your chain before it's super worn out can save you a lot of money on your drivetrain overall. So we think it's worth the investment of a chain wear indicator. You can do it with a ruler. These are handy and just Super easy to do and make sure you don't let your chain get worn out. They also to... last forever, 
Yeah, you like buy it one time and then you'll never have to buy another one ever Until we probably change in your whole life. the size of chain lengths enough that they no longer work. Yeah, but it hasn't happened between 8 and 11 or in 12 speeds, so I'm not worried, too worried. I think it's good to have a nice chain break tool because the ones that come on multi-tools are super annoying. And we've broken a bunch of those also. Having a decent chain break, good thing to have. Since most chains do use a quick link now, we have a quick link installer and remover tool. What's cool about this tool is that it both removes and installs the quick link, which I just think is super, super handy. Here's an example of an older quick link removal tool. So this just removes it and then you have to put it on yourself, which again is doable. You really can't recommend this thing enough. It will save you a lot of time, but it's not necessary. You can remove other people, people other than me, can supposedly remove quick links with pliers. I've seen it done. But if you have it in your budget, these things are wrecked. At this point, if you're investing in a quick link tool, get one that removes and connects the quick link. The last task that we want our beginner mechanic to be able to do is changing and replacing cables and housing. This is slightly more complicated than the other stuff, however, doesn't require many more tools and it will save you a lot of money. Shops often charge a lot to replace cable and housing when it really is pretty easy. And if you do it often, it will keep your bike in much better running order. So to do this task, you will need a good pair of cable cutters. Cable cutters are a pretty specialized tool. Like you really only cut cables and housing with them. However, definitely worth the investment because it will save you over time. We already talked about pliers, but you will need pliers or a crimper tool to close your cable end. So we have a modified set of pliers here that we use as a crimper tool, as you can see, kind of a cutaway in the front so you can really easily smush and then pinch, smush and pinch, the old smush and pinch. So the last thing we wanted to talk about is a work stand. Push the lever. This is obviously somewhat more expensive than everything else we've listed in this video. However, it will make all of those tasks from washing your bike to installing new cables much, much, much easier. It is not necessary. We've done all those things without a work stand, but having a stand makes everything so much easier. As you have probably noticed, we use it in every single video that we do. It definitely is an investment. It's not something that you have to replace all the time. If you have a space in your home or workshop or whatever for a work stand and you have it in your budget right now, we really recommend it. Thanks for watching everyone. If we missed anything, you have anything to add, drop it in the comments. And we hope that this video has helped you get started on working on your own bike. Here's everything we talked about today. Cleaning brushes or sponge, bike cleaner, rags, chain lube, floor pump, Allen keys, screwdrivers, T25, tire levers, tape measure, pen, chain wear indicator, chain brake, quick clink tool, needle nose pliers, cable cutters, and the work stand. Oh God, that's heavy.